The United States' unclear crypto policies have led businesses like Ripple to explore investing outside the nation. Brad Garlinghouse has claimed, the Ripple CEO advised the U.S. to follow the U.K. and Singapore. How do you think this will affect the cryptocurrency and the U.S. economy? We will answer these questions in today's In the ever-changing world of crypto legislation, Ripple Labs' lawsuit against the U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission SIC E stands out. Ripple, the business behind the XRP cryptocurrency and a participant in a legal dispute with the SEC since December 2020. As the lawsuit nears its conclusion, Ripple CEO Brad Garlinghouse has emphasized the necessity of continuous efforts to explain the industry. Brad Garlinghouse, EEO of XRP developer Ripple, has been an outspoken proponent of uniform crypto market regulation. He argues that a clear framework is essential for the development and success of businesses and the safeguarding of customers. In the absence of such certainty, Garlinghouse argues, American entrepreneurs and investors may go abroad for opportunity. He believes rules are necessary to protect investors and keep the market honest, but he emphasizes the need for a compromise that allows for innovative problem, solving while also addressing legitimate concerns. Legal proceedings between the corporation and the sex are coming to a close, but Garlinghouse warned that this is just the beginning of a much larger dispute for the industry and that the fight for regulatory clarity has to continue. The Hyman documents were released on June 13 as part of the continuing litigation between Ripple and the SEC. On the same day, Garlinghouse filed a complaint against the agency and posted a video on Twitter explaining what had happened. Garlinghouse, in a video uploaded on June 17 and using the Hinman documents, says that the SEC knowingly created confusion about the rules, and they used that confusion through enforcement. Garlinghouse, in his address, condemned SEC's actions as bad faith, plain and simple. This, he said, should have been obvious from the start, as the lawsuit against Ripple was first brought in December 2020. Very Grinch, like touch, since it was days before Christmas. As he put it, this is the very definition of putting power and politics over people and good policy. In his defense, Garlinghouse claims he never was informed that XRP was deemed a security, and that he answered every question the second had prior to the complaint being filed. Garlinghouse argues the struggle for regulatory clarity is not over, even if the Ripple SEC issue is settled shortly. According to him, the case has spurred debates and conversations about how crypto will be regulated in the future, which is a good thing. A decisive verdict in the case is necessary for the establishment of a legal precedent and the elucidation of a future course for the industry. In order to foster innovation while protecting investors, Garlinghouse pledges to continue engaging with lawmakers and regulators. He stresses the need of having open and honest dialogue with regulatory entities to establish clear standards for how cryptocurrencies should behave inside the present financial system. He claims that the sex is looking to kill innovation in the cryptocurrency sector in the United States, and that the Hyman speech isn't about any one token or any one blockchain, but rather the CC's general approach towards the cryptocurrency company. Furthermore, the documents at best suggest, as stated by Garlinghouse, that top SEC officials couldn't agree on the policy and personally urged Bill Hyman not to confuse the public about the rules for crypto. Publicly accessible data show that editors were concerned that Hinman's claim that Ether ETH, is not a security would make it difficult for the agency to take a different position on Ether in the future. However, Garlinghouse said that the data showed that Hyman deliberately ignored the law and attempted to create new laws, which was at worst. Since the SEC may take action against other crypto firms in the future, he emphasized the significance of industry-wide coordination. We may be nearing the end of our litigation, but he stressed that for so many others, it is just starting. Thus, the fight for clarity must go on. Binance, a cryptocurrency exchange, was sued by the Securities and Exchange Commission on June 5 for allegedly selling unregistered securities. The next day, the regulator took action against Coinbase for identical grounds. Prominent Bitcoin advocate Max Kaiser has spoken out with his forecast for the result of the case pitting Ripple against the U.S. EOS Securities and Exchange Commission SEC. Kaiser says he thinks Ripple will lose the court and that XRP is marked for death. The current case, Kaiser tweeted recently, is not about the law, but rather about eradicating XRP. According to him, SEC's chair Gary Gensler was tasked with destroying XRP. 
Kaiser further said that El Salvador's acceptance of Bitcoin as legal cash was an important step toward ignoring other cryptocurrencies that are considered unregistered securities. Kaiser also made some remarks on prominent companies and initiatives to provide spot Bitcoin EPS. Recently, WisdomTree, a prominent ETF provider, followed BlackRock in applying to the SEC for permission to create the WisdomTree Bitcoin Trust. Kaiser commented that the SEC's enforcement activities have affected both individual players and crypto exchanges, paving the way for these bigger firms to join the Bitcoin industry. Kaiser, who is well known for his unwavering Bitcoin advocacy, has repeatedly called XRP a shitcoin and other derogatory terms in his criticism of altcoins. In the continuing litigation against Ripple, he has sided with the SEC's claims that XRP is a security. When the SEC takes action against other cryptocurrencies, Kaiser usually uses the occasion to bash the XRP community. Members of the XRP community have shown they are willing to defend the cryptocurrency against Kaiser's claims. Interestingly, CryptoLaw's John Deaton echoed one of Kaiser's claims about the SEC. Deaton agreed with the assessment that SEC chair Gary Gensler is trying to reduce competition by preserving incumbents and the status quo. The continuing discussion over XRP's legal standing and the role of regulatory agencies in influencing the crypto ecosystem is enriched by Kaiser's forecasts and critiques, which come as the Ripple VZ. SEC litigation proceeds. The Monetary Authority of Singapore. Mass. Granted Ripple's Singaporean affiliate, Ripple Markets APAC PTAT, a major payments institution license on June 22. The company also used Twitter to reveal its expanded presence in Asia and Oceania. According to Ripple CEO Brad Garlinghouse, the mass is still in the vanguard of digital asset regulation because it sees the value of cryptocurrencies in commercial and consumer settings. On June 27, as part of Ripple's partnership with the mass, Garlinghouse will speak at a seminar in Switzerland about how investment and clear legislation may aid in the development of digital assets Ripple's chief legal officer, Stu Alderodi. With the recent public release of documents related to the Hinman speech, the ongoing legal action by the USU, Securities and Exchange Commission, SEC, against Ripple Labs has reached a critical turn point and all eyes are now on Judge Annalisa Torres for the eagerly anticipated summary judgment. The Hyman papers essentially revealed the SEC's preference for Ethereum over other cryptocurrencies. Hyman argued that digital assets issued as securities may afterwards transform into non-securities. However, he only cited Ethereum as an example of such a transformation, whereas XRP investors are presently dealing with the Ripple litigation based on the same principle. In March 2023, Judge Torres ruled on the parties' respective applications to exclude expert witness evidence. Although a decision was made in March, the summary judgment has not yet been issued. Judge Torres has often required less time than this between Daubert decisions and summary judgment. Therefore, the Ripple litigation may soon be resolved. Interestingly, in July 2023, the U.S. Federal Reserve will officially launch the FedNow service. Financial institutions in the United States will be able to provide rapid payment services to their customers thanks to this service, and it will be available around the clock, every day of the year. Notable among the banks participating in the July 1 launch are Finastra, Volante Technologies, and Axie Worldwide, all of whom are Ripple partners. Given this information, some in the cryptocurrency world have speculated that the final ruling in the Ripple litigation has to be issued before the launch of the FedNow service in order to assure complete legal compliance. Given how things are shaping out, it seems like July 1, 2023 might end up being a watershed moment in Ripple's legal struggle with the SEC. The crypto industry is keeping a close eye on this day because it may have far-reaching consequences for the future of regulation of all digital assets, not just Ripple.